how do you rent your nfts let's say you have some utility nfts and you want to rent them out to somebody else how do you do that and before that how do you as a developer allow your users to rent those nfts gm 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 what's up clubbers welcome to web3 club and in today's video what we're going to do is understand how do we create a smart contract an nft smart contract that allows its users to rent out their nfts this has been recently standardized by EIP 4907 or ERC 4907 and we are going to learn what it means to rent out an NFT, what does the rented NFT look like, what does the user get in return and how does it all come together. But before we get started, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I've heard a rumor that if you don't subscribe to the channel, your smart contract might, might get hacked. So. I wouldn't take that risk if I were you. If you want to send me a message, please leave it in the YouTube comments. If you want to contact me for some consultation, for some sponsorship, my email is in my about section on my YouTube channel. And if you have a specific question, come join my Discord server. There are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out. All right, with that said, let's get started. So I have this ERC EIP open EIP 4907 which is for rental NFT which is an extension of EIP 721 the NFT smart contract um, standard ERC 721 all right it adds a time limited role with restricted permissions to EIP 721 tokens now what essentially it does is it adds a, an additional role called user so earlier we had only one role which was owner of owner of token ID now we have a user of wealth so with this additional role you can grant access to whatever user is returned by this address so if you have an nft let's say a gaming nft you check whether i own that nft by just checking out the user uh, method the user of method how earlier we used to do for owner of and this time we will just check whether the user of is the current uh, player who is who is logged in if it is then we allow them to do something if they are not then we don't this is basically token gating but instead of using the owner of a method you will use user of method now when you give uh, a user the right to be the user of an nft you also allow, uh, give an expiry time after which they are no longer the owner the user of that nft so it's in a sense the user role represents permission to use the nft but not the ability to transfer it or set users so if you're renting a house the only thing that you can do is use that house you cannot sell that house you cannot let somebody else stay in the house unless of course specified in your specific contract so similarly in our smart contract we can let a user use this or also allow them to do other things but for the sake of things i mean why would you do that right like renting is not ownership similarly we will not uh, put that functionality over here so coming to the interface of it uh, there are one to three functions and one event all right the three functions are set user which is um, called by the owner of the token id or an approved smart contract or address uh, which can basically call this the set user sets the user of a token id uh, as this user and then with an expiry time all right similarly we have a function called user of which returns who is the current user of this token id and then we also have a function called user expires which returns at what unix timestamp will this user's rental expire and whenever we set a user what we do is we uh, send this event uh, called update user which you know includes a token id the user and the expiry all right so these are the four things that we need for erc 4907 and one more thing that we need to in, uh, implement is the supports interface which you know will return true when called with this value so you as a software builder what you will do is you will check whether the logged in user has any nft any nft that they are user of and if they are you will grant them the access to that nft to do whatever they want now the good thing about this erc is that they also have implemented um, this interface once so what we can do is just simply copy that code all right so let me just find that code there it is so what we need is we just need to copy this reference implementation and uh, oops okay once copied i'll go to remix we'll create a new file um let's just call it erc4907.sol 
paste our code over here and this is the file that we have now you can see that it is importing an interface for 4907 so what we'll do is quickly go and copy this interface ef erc4907 so i've copied it and i'll create a new file called ierc 4907.sol don't worry i will make this code available in the description down below all right and then i think it will need like pragma solidity as well so let me just paste that great and let me just auto compile stuff so that i know if there's an error but yeah uh, so this is the code and it already has an error and that is i believe uh, it doesn't write override over here and here and also here <laughs> All right, now uh, this thing works. Let's just go through what this code is doing. Let me just uh, increase the font size first. Now, uh, this is an ERC4907, that is the name of the contract. Uh, this you can set whatever. This contract is inheriting from ERC721, which is an open Zeppelin ERC721. So it's a standard NFT smart contract. And it is also inheriting from the interface uh, IERC4907, which is this interface. This interface declares one, two, three, and four methods. Okay. Now that we have these methods, uh, what we also have is a struct called user info that we will use later and a mapping which is of the token ID to the user info. So this, this mapping, this underscore users mapping, what this will store is who is the current user of this NFT. So that is the token ID that will be the NFT and the user's info will have the user and the expiry okay so these are the two things that we need here then there's a constructor which you know let me just clean it up <laughs> all right so we have a constructor which accepts a name and a symbol and we have um, calling erc721 from this then we have implementation of the set user now what this is doing is uh, first it checks whether the message dot sender is either the owner or an approved address to take any action if they are not it gives us an error and if they are what we do is we store the the, the user and the expires in the user info struct so this info is underscore users with the token id it will give either a null like empty struct with empty values or it will give us something so if there is something or if there is nothing uh, what we do is we override the user and the expires with this over here and then we emit the update user event of course what you can do is before setting these values what you can check is whether info dot um, expires is less than block dot timestamp or actually if it is greater than or equal to block dot timestamp so if we require this over here actually it should be less than so we require that info dot expires is less than block dot timestamp if it is it, it is fine if it is not what we do is we give an error that already rented to someone if you want uh, to not allow uh, the owner to arbitrarily take the rented nft to, from somebody else to give it and give it to somebody else all right so this is a set user the next is user off so what it does is let me just clear this code clean this code up a bit uh, and what it does is it firstly it checks whether the the user details right now if the expires is greater than or equal to block dot timestamp we return who is the current user all right if it if expires is less than block dot timestamp which means the expiry is in past we return address zero as per this function what you can also do is instead of returning address zero what you can do is return the owner of the token id all right so this way you um the software just needs to read the user off every time uh, and if the user is the current user then you go ahead if the user is the current owner then also you go ahead you don't need to like put an if statement whether the if the user is zero address then you, uh, what do we do and then we have a user expires and which returns when does the current uh, user expire so what you can also do is copy this and paste this over here and what we do is if the expiry is in future we return the current expiry date if it is not in future uh, i guess we can return u into 56 or minus 1 actually u into u into 56 minus 1 is not allowed so you can just paste this big ass number 
uh, which is like to eternity to infinity okay uh, so the user expiry if you know if the owner owns it it is till infinity till you know till whatever then we have the support interface which super calls it so calls it for uh, the erc721 and also if the interface id is of the type 4907 it you know returns true okay and then what we have also done is before token transfer so before the token is transferred we first call it uh, the call the before so token transfer and after what we do is we delete any kind of um, renting that we have done so what you can also do is add over here that you know the user has not um, rented this token to somebody else if if they have rented it to somebody else what you can do is just make sure that the user cannot transfer this token like the owner cannot transfer this token if there is a legit user that is available over there so to do that you can just check the current expiry uh, for this user token id if this expiry is in the future you simply throw an error over here all right and one thing that i think i want to add over here is a mint function because it is just not there right now so what we can do is just add u in 256 uh, token id for this mint which can be a public mint and that is pretty much pretty much it this is the mint function that you know you need to customize for yourself okay so when this function is there what you can do is just call underscore mint uh, with token id and uh, the two address can be the message dot sender okay so whoever is calling this mint function they basically get to mint this thing oh my bad this this needs to be uh, early like the first argument and the token id needs to be the second argument okay so we have this uh, code ready uh, the next thing that we'll do is go here select remix okay uh, we have an account uh, we will just simply write one name and a symbol and we will deploy this erc4907 actually before doing this what i also want is a function that returns the current block timestamp uh, now why do i want that because uh, this is how you know i can basically show you what is uh, the current time and who is the owner and the code works and what so this is the function that we need block dot timestamp is what we want to return and the compilation is done now this can i believe be a pure function right view function sorry and the compilation has been done so now we just write name and symbol over here and we go and test it out all right the transaction has succeeded now i'm going to increase the font size so that you can see what's going on over here i'll also show this over here so that uh, we can see that the transaction has done completed or not okay so the first thing <laughs> that i will do is just mint an nft for myself all right so you can check out uh, who is the user of this token which is me uh, who is um, the owner of this token again me when does this token expire long time in the future and what is the current time this is it so this number is definitely smaller than this okay now whenever i make this call this number sort of changes so you know remember okay so the next thing that i want to do is uh, set a new user for this token id all right so i'll just set one uh, let me just grab a new address and then send a transaction from my own address uh, and i'll paste the new address and the expiry that i want will be let's say 50 seconds or 20 seconds in the future so this is the current time let me just make it 90 okay so let me transact so the 790 is what we end this thing with and 781 is the current time so you can check the user off is this and the user expiry is this all right so now we wait nine seconds or something like that i hope nine seconds are over and they are so now moment of truth who is the user and the user should be whoever is the owner see the owner does not change okay and if i click here again the user is again the owner the the nft was rented for about 20 seconds and you can check over here again the expiry has changed 
and gone back to infinity now let's do one more thing i want to show you the owner doesn't change i'll just paste this over here and then this time what we'll do is we'll put it for let's say 890 which is the longest time the current time right now is 827 so the owner is still me okay the user expiry has changed and user off has again changed so it is now uh, rented for a lot of seconds 838 is the current time and 890 is the expiry time so now we wait for the expiry to go through and then we'll check whether the uh, what changes i've already shown what changes but again uh, user off is who we have given it to the expiry time is this the time till which they, we have given to them this is the current time the current owner of this token id is this address all right now once we are done with this what we'll also test is how does approval function over here so in the meantime that it is working what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to copy this new address the third one the 4b21 i'm going to copy this and i'm going to set this as the approve so i can do it via this set approval for all or i can do it for a specific token id with this approve function I'm going to do set approval for all and just set this to true. All right, now that is done, we can go back and test whether the old thing worked or not. And you can see that the time that has crossed the expiry, the user is again back to me. Now, since we have set the approval uh, to the second address, what I third address, so what I can do is select the third address and copy a new time. So 41, 941 is the ending, so I'm going to put it till 9. 90 and this time i'm going to make this transaction from the second account which is the approved account and setting the user again so i click transact and now you can see the user of has changed again for a new expiry all right and the owner of has not changed so this is how a marketplace a lending marketplace can operate they can get the approval and then set the user on behalf of the owner and you can see nothing has changed because the time has not moved forward like it, the time current time is not more than the expiry time uh, so six more seconds and it should be more than the expiry time done you can see suddenly the user has changed again so you as a nft developer the smart contract developer you will basically use this user off um, to give your fun your nft functionality your nft utility and the lending marketplace what they will do is get this approval set approval for all or a specific uh, approve and then once that is done you will call this set user function on behalf of the owner all right so you will just say take token id user and expires and since you already have the approval is approved or owner will give you true and you can basically move forward now the lending marketplace will of course have a payable function or something like that so that the user who is renting renting out their nft gets to make some money and that is it this is how you do lending for nfts i recommend you go through this erc which is a very simple to understand erc erc 4907 and just understand what is going on read the code uh, for this specific i will put this in the description down below this was a re hugely requested video in my discord servers which is why i made this video I hope you liked it. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I've heard that you will generate bugs if you don't subscribe to the channel. So if I were you, I would subscribe to the channel and probably share these videos as well. If you want to send me a message, please leave it in the YouTube comments. If you want to contact me for a sponsorship, for consultation, my email is in the YouTube bio. And if you have a specific question, come join my Discord server. There are a bunch of people just like you and me. We're trying to help each other out. I hope to see you again next week. Till then, bye-bye.